Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are working on high-speed boats in Kerbal Space Program. This is a typical jet boat. We took some aircraft hulls, we put some rudders on it, and of course we have an air intake and jets on it. This is, of course, to exploit the new hydrodynamic features in Kerbal Space Program 1.05. Now, immediately, yeah, it does take a little bit to get going, but once it gets going, it gets up to easily over 10 meters per second, which, frankly, was almost impossible using the old uh, Kerbal Space Program, unless of course you exploited air intakes. Yes, yeah, 16 meters per second seems to be what we top out as. However, this boat has a secret. A secret hidden below the waterline that makes it go faster. This is a hydrofoil. It's a working hydrofoil in Kerbal Space Program. So yeah, these fins underneath the water, they generate uh, aerodynamic forces, or more strictly speaking, hydrodynamic forces. So if I just start to turn these things on here. I'm doing this manually so you can actually see which parts I'm adjusting. There we go. Immediately lifts the body clear of the water and look my speed is starting to rise quite quickly. So this is, yeah, it works totally like a hydro, uh, hydrofoil. Did I say hydroplane? It's a hydrofoil. Hydroplaning is where you skip over pools of water. Hydrofoils are types of boats with uh, wings, essentially, under the water. Fins that are designed to lift the fuselage or the body, the hull, clear. And so this one I can steer, you notice, just by applying a little bit of trim to the roll here. It's really quite beautiful. Notice there is no stability control or anything enabled here. This is passively stable. Um, the only thing is, to be careful of this, is the speed can run away from you. So the, the thing to realize here is that as these fins rise up out of the water, the relative drag and forces on them get vastly reduced. So if the force isn't sufficient to keep them clear of the water, they'll drop back into the water and uh, the forces will rise again. So the whole thing that self-stabilizes, that's it's really quite beautiful. The more of these wings I add, the more, you know, the more degrees of lift, I guess, the whole thing has. But Funnily enough, this is Kerbal Space Program, so this is probably overdoing it a bit in terms of thrust. This engine is way more powerful than anything that we would get on a, a regular uh, small boat like this. And these wings are probably a little extreme, to the point that we can in fact let the whole thing lift off into the air and fly it like an aircraft. Yes, you probably wouldn't expect that to happen with a boat, largely because most hydrofoils still use conventional propeller engines that push water around rather than actual you know, jets from airplanes. There are cases where they use jet engines, but uh, yeah, I don't know ones in particular. Anyway, yeah, it does actually fly pretty well. The only thing to watch out for is that even the slightest turn tends to cause very high g-forces. Oh, there we go. Super close to the surface here. Try not to fly into anything. Look, look at our speed, we're moving at almost 300 meters per second, and let's turn now. Watch the G-meter, G-meter pegged up to like 15 Gs for a second, and almost higher when I nearly hit the ground there. Okay, so yeah, it flies. So we can operate on the water and in the air. Can we land it back on the water? Well, that's gonna take a little bit of practice. Oh, look, there's the monolith. Hello, monolith. Okay. So we gotta touch down very slowly in the water. The main reason being, as soon as we touch the water, these the drag is gonna get vastly amplified. And there's a real danger that what'll happen is that we end up cartwheeling forwards, essentially nose diving. So I'm gonna try and bleed off as much speed as possible here and try to keep this Oh darn. Well there we go. We'll better call the the repair truck or whatever. Hey, at least we didn't break anything. Okay, second try at a landing. We haven't got nearly as far this time, but we're gonna apply a lot more flaps. We're gonna apply flaps everywhere. Oh, yes, watch that just a bit. Okay, wow, this thing does not like working. <laughs> okay. 70 meters per second. I want to go as slowly as possible. I'm essentially going to probably stall it into the water here, right? 50, 40, 30. Come on. Slow, 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 slow. Oh, yes. Excellent. A perfect landing on the ocean here. And nothing damaged. We're all ready to go again. So let's switch these flaps off and prepare to, to take this fast. Let's see how fast we can actually get this thing to go. 
So I'm just going to deploy those and throttle up. There we go again. Very slow start because initially the, the water kind of isn't really flowing. It's kind of more turbulent. But once you get above a certain speed, the turbulence gets reduced and the whole thing starts to work vastly more efficiently, I might say. With much lower drag. At least that's how it's simulated. There, there we go. Watch. 17 meters per second. And once we get above this critical speed, we're re really going to start moving fast. Okay, let's see just how fast we can take this thing. Now, I'm probably going to use stability control for this. We're not going to rely on passive stability because as we get fast, those forces are really going to start making things change very quickly. So, to get, once we got those first spins out of the water, I turn off the, the flaps on those second ones. See, again, the idea is that as these things rise out of the water, they lose lift, so it should be self-balancing here. Well, we're up to 70 meters per second. We're really starting to get to ridiculous speeds here. These speeds actually are much more consistent with uh, the Soviet Ekrano plan, which is a ground effect vehicle. Looks nothing like this, but actually in Kerbal Space Program, since it doesn't do ground effect, this does actually share a number of things in common. We're well past 100 now. That's, that's us almost 400 kilometers per hour. That's a magic number. I know somewhere in there, my mental math, I think that's us past 400 kilometers per hour. Okay, now I daren't try turning at this speed because I think bad things will happen. 115, I'm seeing it just blinking around these numbers here. I think every time it touches the water, it just loses a bit. The question is, are the, it's just kind of skipping there across the water, you see that? Oh, there we go, oh, oh dear. But hey, everyone survived! Everyone survived! That is surely a good result from an experimental trial. Finally, having seen how successful this thing is on the sea and in the air, the question is asked, how well does it work on the land? And so, uh, let's head it towards the coast just to see what happens when you drive a hydrofoil onto a beach. Oh, uh, this is a kind of limited hydrofoil. I could probably try something bigger and better, but uh, yeah, this is head in that way, 270 degrees, course is set, not quite full speed ahead, not quite calling a David Farragut, after all there are no torpedoes here, only a beach, a mass of sand and rock, and yes, we successfully breached the beachhead and went a whole 9 meters up the side of this uh, beach here, not bad if I do say so myself. So there you have it, a somewhat working hydrofoil in Kerbal Space Program. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.